This is the third video, and here I want to talk about some of the problems which are associated with alpha. Now we know that alpha is related to the correlation coefficient. And there's a formula for finding what is known as standardized alpha. K, as usual, is the number of items uh, on the questionnaire. And R bar is the mean inter-item correlation. So here we can see that we can find an alpha of 0.8 when the number of items on the scale increases from 3 to 10 and the mean inter-item correlation drops from 0.57 to 0.28. Now this is very strange because you might expect the mean inter-item correlation to increase as alpha increases, but it doesn't. And this is what happens when we hold the mean inter-item correlation coefficient at 0.42 and increase the items on the questionnaire, thanks to Deshaun Michigan State University for this. So you could theoretically just increase alpha by just repeating the same question. Uh, these are two references which I found uh, helpful here, Cortina and Green et al. But what more worrying is in fact the uh, concept of the true score, which has been banded about. You can find true score theory all over the internet and it will be referred to as somehow justifying Cronbach's alpha. So the idea is that x is a measurement of t, which is the true score, and that we can expect there to be some measurement error, epsilon. So if the error is small, epsilon tends to zero. But when you measure something, you don't just measure once, you repeat the measurements to see if they're similar. That's the whole point of reliability. The measurements should be similar to each other. Well, let's have a look at this. Uh, xj is equal to t plus uh, epsilon j. Notice that in the second equation, there is no uh, subscript j for t. It's logical because t must be a constant. But I've put in the uh, subscript in the third equation just so that we can try and make sense of Cronbach's alpha uh, through this idea of the true score. So Cronbach used the example of a track runner who was timed by several students, and their chronometer readings show 23.7, 24, etc., and there's a mean of 24.1. Now, we know that these are the measurements of one run, so the true score must be the real score of the runner. And that must be a constant. What, in fact, Cronbach goes on to argue is that the true score variance is equal to the observed score variance minus the error variance. What, in fact, he states is we obtain the variance of true score of observed scores of a group of persons and subtract the error variance to estimate the true score variance. The reliability coefficient is a ratio R subscript x x dash equal to the true score variance over the observed score variance. And the traditional symbol that R xx dash suggests the correlation of one measure x with a similar measure x dash. That's on page 193. But we already know that the true score for one individual cannot have variance. Cronbach goes on to state our xx dash directly answers the question what percentage of the test score variance is attributable to true differences rather than error. That's on page 194. Now this is logically flawed. R xs dash 
merely shows the correlation between two sets of scores. The correlation between two sets of measurements tells us nothing about the true score. And another failure here, which is quite obvious, is Cronbach himself argues that this shows us what percentage of the test score variance is attributable to true differences rather than error. Well, that's OK if we have one variance over another variance, because we know that variances can't be negative. But what happens is we know that alpha can be negative. Now, there's a problem here, which is very large. Here is a summary with some symbols to show you another way this is all written. And we're going to use those here. Um, so the, the, here, this is an attempt to show or to try and make some sense of the idea of perfect reliability in its relation to the true score. If we have four cases where there is a true score of 2, 1, 3 and 4, there will be a variance of 1.25. Measurements could be perfectly accurate, so we could have x meaning 2, 1, 3 and 4, which is exactly identical to the true scores, and the variance is exactly the same, 1.25. So the quotient gives you, as you would expect, 1. There's no error. But have a look at this. The true scores are 4, 3, 2 and 1, with the same variance, 1.25. But the measurements are 1, 2, 3 and 4, with the same variance, 1.25. But there's clearly, there are clearly errors associated with each case. Now that also gives us a quotient of the two variances equal to 1. But is this perfect reliability? Or here. Here we have true scores of 2, 3, 4 and 5 with the same variance. And we have measurements 1, 2, 3 and 4 with the same variance. So we have, once again, the, the quotient of the two variances gives us 1. But in this case, we have a systematic underestimation of the true score. So we have an error of minus 1 in each case. So this is a real problem.